One of the designs that I found pretty interesting on Tiny Tape Out 7 was this 12-bit SAR A to D by Ricardo Nunes. It's a very nice mix signal design, 12 bits, pretty nice. We saw an 8-bit SAR A to D, I think, on Tiny Tape Out 6. So interested to see if I can get this one working. It's already been marked working by Sylvain and the author. It's got a couple of nice features, like being able to run it in differential or single-ended mode. And I really like the 3D layout. Check this out. Very cool. So the digital stuff is at the top here. And then the analog stuff is in this middle. And then this bottom is a lot of capacitors. And the way that an, a SAR A to D works, we have... Uh, an analog input with a sample and hold, and then a comparator is fed an input from a DAC, and the DAC is controlled by the logic. So that's this stuff up here. And it's a um, sequential successive approximation register. So it does a binary search like this. It's trying to make, sets an output for its um, DAC, sees if it's higher or lower with the comparator, and then moves on with its binary search until it homes in. On what the input is. A to D we've got quite a few inputs. We've got uh, the common mode reference, the voltage reference, the ground reference, negative input and positive input. Now for I'm going to test it on single ended mode so I can tie a bunch of these down to zero and then on the digital side we've got a start and a single ended mode input so those are going to both be set to high and then we retrieve the data on the output and as the clock data goes up, we get the six most significant bits. And as the clock data goes down, we get the six least significant digits. Let's take a look at the bench over here. And I've got the um, logic analyzer connected here. I've got one probe on the input clock and another on that output clock and then here I've just got uh, the voltage reference setup coming from the power supply and I've tuned that with my multimeter and it was very handy having this cool um, PCB data sheet there to be able to find out easily where to connect things. So if we take a look at the scope and first what we'll do is use the commander and choose the 12-bit SAR, select that Let's go for a one megahertz clock frequency. And then we need to set single-ended and start. And now we should be able to see something going on. So let's zoom in. So maybe I can just go out one a little bit, so we see, there we go. It takes 16 of these clocks coming in and then we get the yellow is the output clock. Can ignore this um, for the time being, that is the signal generator on the scope. And then when the clock edge is rising, that's when we read the most significant bits and when the clock data is falling, we read the least significant bits. So if I zoom in again, what I'll do is I'll connect that input signal to zero volts. And now we can see that on the rising edge, the most significant bits are all zero. On the least significant bits, we've got some noise happening. So a more in-depth investigation here would be doing like a noise analysis to see how many significant bits we've really got on this DAC. And now if I connect it to the common mode reference, that we should be getting half the reading of before. And we see that the top uh, most significant bit is always zero, which is to be expected. And then the next one is either zero or one. And another thing that's interesting to see here is that you see the outputs as they toggle, as it, the DAC successively homes in on the final uh, reading. So that's what this kind of stuff is happening here before and during and then we only want to sample the data here and here. So to do that I've got a little Python program I've written. Uh, this top part just 
connects to the demo board and enables the um, A to D. Then just like with the commander, starts the conversion and sets it single-ended, resets it. And then here, we're toggling the clock, grabbing what the output clock is. If it changed and it's high, then that's the most significant bit. And if it changed and it was low, then that's the least significant bits. Then print out the data and then uh, update that last clock out. So I can disconnect here, come back here and run my program. So now it's going to be easier to see what the output is. Now it's all running a lot, lot slower. because it's all being handled by the micro Python now. And the clock is really not at all regular. But there you go, we can see we've got our leading and our tailing edge, but I'm now reading this. So this is in single ended mode, it's only an 11 bit DAC. If we come back up here, 11 bit single ended. So a halfway reading should be 1024. So you can see we're roughly that. I'll connect it down to zero. And we're getting the zeros. I'll connect it up to the top reference voltage. And we should see mostly all ones. And then finally, I'm going to connect it to the signal generator on the scope, which is producing a sine wave. And you can see this is the slowest my scope can generate a sine wave, 300 millihertz. But you can see we've got this um, smoothly changing numbers here. So for a first test, the uh, A to D looks good. So nice work, Ricardo. And I hope you enjoyed seeing that little test and make sure that if you've got your own designs taped out on Tiny Tape Out A6, that you do some tests and you submit your results. So thanks for watching and I'll see you for the next one.